All right, what's up, everybody? Um, so I'm gonna make a quick video here. I've been searching online and searching through YouTube, trying to find a way to be able to set up telemetry through my spectrum transmitter um, to be able to give me RSSI warnings uh, via OSD and via transmitter warnings. Um, so I finally, uh, finally got enough information where I was able to get this complete and. Hopefully this video will help uh, help out help a lot of people out because I know there's been a lot of question about it and I haven't been able to find the information available by anybody so I'm gonna go ahead and put this out there um, I must seem secretive so let's get this shared so people can get this function on their on their equipment as well so here's my Armington Chameleon it has the Joshua Bardwell F4 AIO controller on it uh, flight controller F4 and then the Spectrum 4649T um, telemetry receiver. So on these telemetry receivers, the important thing you have to know is you have to hook up to TX, not RX. So I'm connected to TX4 on the flight controller, and that's where I'm going to be running my, uh, my telemetry through. On the regular serial based receivers, they have to be through RX, not TX. But on the telemetry receivers, you can run it through RX, you won't be able to use telemetry, but if you run it through TX, you'll be able to run telemetry. So we'll go over how to set that up in beta flight. So before I connect, uh, real quick, on a safety note, anytime you're going to be using any kind of power, or I try to generally, if I'm going to connect to beta flight to remove your props, um, I did have an exciting episode earlier today I was actually updating my serial um, receivers via Horizon's um, desktop app and uh, <laughs> when it went through the update process I had my props on didn't even think about it on there and they winded up spooling up and it shot halfway across my desk so um, again anytime you're going to hook to the computer I would say that it's a great idea just go ahead and pull your props off it only takes a couple minutes a couple minutes can save you a gash on your finger or, or worse um, or keep you from busting props so um, no harms no injuries here but um, just lesson learned uh, so anyways let's go ahead and get into into beta flight here I'm gonna go ahead and connect Alright, so once we're into beta flight, the important things we need to do is one on your porch tab. Again, for the UART you're using on the TX, I know it says RX here, but you're using TX for using telemetry. Uh, make sure that UART is turned on on serial RX. Um, then save and reboot. And then we'll go to configuration tab. And we're going to scroll down. And you'll see here, um, I'm currently set to serial based receivers, Spectrum, SBUS, SUMD. And then for beta flight versions 10.3 and newer is Spectrum 2048 SRXL. For 10.2 and older is going to be Spectrum BIDIR, it's bi-directional. Um, your RSSI signal strength here make sure this tab is off and make sure you turn telemetry on all right save and reboot and then we'll go over to the receiver tab so here you're going to make sure you're set to spectrum Gropner uh, JR which will put you on Tayer 1234 and then you're going to go to your RSSI channel right here. I know this might be difficult to see, guys. Um, but right here on the side, um, you want to set that to an auxiliary channel that you're not using. So if you know, you're know you using 1, 2, and 3 for any of your modes, make sure you set it to an auxiliary channel outside of that parameter. Um, if you're using a DX6, you might be using a channel, um, auxiliary channel for um, for arming and disarming, and another for changing flight modes or for other various settings that you can put it towards. 
um, so you'd be limited to, to three extra auxiliary channels. So just make sure that you set it to a channel that's not being used on your controller. Um, so once that setting's there, save, and we'll move on to OSD. So on your OSD, you just want to make sure you turn the RSSI value to on. And that's it, guys. I mean, that simple. It's safe. All right, so currently I'm running the iX12. Um, super simple to set up. I know the process is pretty much the same on other other Spectrum products. Um, so what you want to do is you want to go into model setup, and then you're going to go to telemetry, and then I ran an auto config, gave me RPM, volts, temperature, flight pack, and then I selected five was my first empty and went to the bottom of the scroll down and selected text gen uh, brought up this screen I turned display on and hit save so then after that you want to go down to the bottom and go to channel assign so once you're in channel assign um, what I did was, since uh, AUX3 is what I set up on, um, on Betaflight, it was actually AUX4 on Betaflight, which is the third auxiliary channel on your, on your controller because gear is your first, um, according to Betaflight. So uh, AUX4 is channel 8 for me, um, and I changed that off of a switch and moved it down to inhibit. So, um, also, if you go into the port assignment, you can see here, AUX3 for channel 8, okay? So then, what that does is that gives you these screens right here. You have the telemetry screen. Um, flight log uh, min max so that tells you uh, minimum voltage max volt so minimum volt per cell max volt per cell um, or per pack I mean um, voltage will display here also so you don't really need all these because really all you need is one to show you the voltage um, flight pack capacity had it was plugged in I'll go ahead and go ahead and get that on there So you can see here, um, capacity is capacity drawn, so that's what's coming off of it. Current burn is uh, 0.4 amps or 400 milliamps. Um, so then text gen by turning that on gives you the ability to control um, your OSD features uh, such as uh, your VTX control um, as well as your PID tuning. Uh, rate tuning and everything else via controller same way you would get into on your OSD Yeah, now showing 15 volts What is showing per cell and Kind of odd this started off working for me showing RSSI value here um, But I don't know why it's not showing it now but it does still show RSSI value on my monitor, which I'll be showing you next. And that's pretty much it, guys, on the controller. Alright, guys, I know this might be hard to see, but here's my monitor. And you can see I'm now showing uh, 99 on my, uh, my RSSI value in the top corner. I'm trying to angle this where the light don't wash it out. Um, so before, all I was getting was a flashing 9. Um, then when I was out flying, gave it throttle. The number would rise as I was throttling. As I throttled down, the number would start dropping. Um, so now I've got a steady 99 at range. And we can do a little test here. See if I can prop this up. That way we don't get the glare from my overhead light here. 
And what I'm going to do is go in my controller and go to range test. And see if I can hit half power and make it drop up. There we go. So I hit half power and it's starting to drop down. Again, it's not dropping much because I'm super close to, to my receiver. But you can see there is a value I let off. goes right back to 99. I can hit range test again and the value will start dropping down. And the more I get in front of it, like I put it behind my back, we're getting down in the 80s. So, um, not complicated at all. I don't know why this wasn't an easy video to find. So if it is out there and I was overlooking it, uh, my mistake on doubling up content, but um, I just figured, you know, I couldn't find it. I'm sure there's a lot of other people that can't find it. So I'm going to put this out there and maybe this will help people find it. So I do want to give a big shout out to Bardwell. Um, he's helped me through a lot of uh, a lot of items. Um, if you do have trouble, you should check him out. Uh, Joshua Bardwell, FPV Know It All. Um, you sign up for his email and shoot him an email. Hit him up on Facebook. Uh, he usually responds in a pretty timely manner. Uh, very knowledgeable guys help me through a lot of problems and point me in the right directions um, for, for finding fixes, anyways. Um, also, uh, also a shout out to Schizo. He's the one that first helped me through PID tuning between him and uh, Stingy. Um, so definitely appreciate it, guys. I appreciate the content. Um, I mean, enjoy the hobby. Uh, you guys are a big part of my inspiration. So, um, again, definitely appreciate it. Uh, guys, keep it safe.